Good morning, good morning, my precious brothers and sisters. How are you guys doing? This is Pastor Sean Pinder coming with morning prayer this morning. Praise God. On this entire week, we are focusing on knowing God's will for your life. This entire week, I just felt led by the Holy Ghost to zero in on this. This is a very important topic in your life, how to know God's will in your life. And on this morning, I'm focusing on what to do when God's will is not clear. Because we all have to deal with this. What do we do when God's will is not clear? And before we jump into the word, I want to worship God this morning. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. You are my strength. Strength like no other. Strength like no other. Reaches in the fullness of your grace. In the fullness of your grace. In the power of your name. Lift me up, mighty God, you are. You lift me up in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name. You lift me up. Come on, sing to the Lord. You lift me up. You are my hope. You are my hope. Hope like no other, hope like no other, reaches to me, you are my peace, you are my peace, sing to the Lord, peace like no other, peace like no other, reaches to me. In the fullness of your grace, in the fullness of your grace, in the power of your name, you lift me up, you lift me up, in the fullness. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ on this morning, God, as we are about to jump into a very important subject in the hearts and minds and lives of your people, we pray for wisdom, knowledge, and understanding to be released from the Word of God. Bring direction, bring, bring clarity into the hearts and minds and lives of your people. Many of your people this very day, this very week, this very month have crucial and very important decisions to make for their families, for their businesses, for their marriages for their children, God. Young people about to go to college and universities have very important decisions to make. Minister to them from the Word of God and help them to discover and find your perfect will. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Someone say a good amen right there. On this morning, I'm talking about what to do when God's will is not clear. Because the will of God is not always crystal clear. And you know, that's why the Apostle Paul said in Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, he said, Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that, watch the three levels to the will of God, that you may prove what is that good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. You know, the will of God in a lot of cases, even in the Bible, the will of God comes in stages. It comes good. It's the first level of the will of God. The second level of the will of God is it's acceptable. And then the third level of the will of God is the perfect will of God. And sometimes you may start out with the good will of God, but it always leads you like a staircase into the perfect will of God. Are you listening to me? 
Now, but what I want to zero in on this morning is what to do when God's will is not clear. What do you do? How do you move forward when, when you don't know how to even take the next step? We are about to find out in the life of David as David was on the run for his life from a jealous king by the name of King Saul. He was in hot pursuit with his entire army after David. King Saul was too afraid of Goliath, but he was not afraid to chase God's anointed servant. That always blows my mind. That the guy who was full of the devil that King Saul should have took the whole army and went after, they were paralyzed with fear. But the very one that God used to bring deliverance to the entire nation of Israel, that's the one the king said, let's go kill him. Let's get rid of him. Because he was jealous because David was anointed and he was not anointed anymore. Now watch this. So the Bible says, I'm taking you to 1 Samuel chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. The Bible says, so David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Now you know that's a disgrace. That David was more comfortable in Goliath's hometown. He was more comfortable in Gath, surrounded by his enemies. He felt safer among them than he was around King Saul. That, that's a shame, man. So David left Gath and escaped to the cave of Adullam. Soon his brothers and all his other relatives joined him there because King Saul would have killed his mom, dad, brothers, sisters, everybody. That's what the spirit of jealousy does. There is no limit to how far that devil will go. Now watch this. Verse 2 says, Then others began coming, men who were in trouble or in debt, or who were just discontented until David was captain of about 400 men. All of the rejects of society, they ran to David and the anointing of the Holy Ghost on David's life served as an umbrella for those men of God. Because some of these same men end up being David's mighty men. My God, when they came to David, they were nobodies, but God raised them up. But listen to verse 3. The Bible says, later, David went to Mizpah in Moab where he asked the king, please allow my father and mother to live here with you until I know what God is going to do for me. Now watch this. Now he went to the king of Moab because they were David's relatives. Remember Ruth? Remember Ruth? Boaz married to Ruth and they gave birth to Obed. Obed was the father of Jesse and Jesse was the father of David. So Ruth was David's great, great grandmother. Ruth of Moab. So these were David's relatives. But I want you to pay attention to what he said in verse 3. Later David went to Mizpah in Moab where he asked the king, please allow my father and mother to live here with you. Watch this. Notice what he says next. Until I know what God is going to do for me. Now let me say this. It's better to wait until you are 100% convinced concerning God's will for your life. The Bible says in verse 4, So David's parents stayed in Moab with the king during the entire time David was living in the stronghold. That place of living in the stronghold is a type of a season of waiting in prayer before God until the will of God becomes crystal, crystal clear until you have no doubt that this is 100% God speaking to you. So David had that season. David had the season where David said, I'm not going to move until I know what God is going to do for me. Now, where, where most of us get into trouble is we storm ahead and just forge forward, not knowing what the will of God is. And that's how people marry the wrong man, marry the wrong, wrong woman, get caught up in the wrong business deal. Are you listening to me? And get caught up in the wrong type of friendships that hanging around people you had no business around because you didn't wait on God. Jumping on the wrong ministry opportunity. Taking the wrong job. Are you listening to what I'm saying? So, what we should do when we don't know, when God's will, listen, when God's will is not clear to us, you should stand still 
and wait for the salvation of the Lord. Because they that wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not get weary. They shall walk and not faint. Now watch this. As a result of David being willing to wait in the stronghold in that season of prayer and waiting till he know for sure what God's will was, the Bible says in verse 5, thank God for prophets. One day, the prophet Gad told David, leave the stronghold and return to the land of Judah. So David went to the forest of Herath. David knew that Gad was a real prophet of God. Things that he said had come to pass. He was a, he was a tried, tested, and proven prophet of God. He was a seasoned prophet of God. He was not a shooting star. He was not a fly by night. This man was proven, tried, and tested, and David knew that if this man of God said, David, it's time to leave the stronghold, he knew this man, this man didn't play games with God's people. Are you listening to me? Now, unlike today, this is where we get messed up. The minute we hear a prophecy, we're ready to jump and run without testing that word against the word of God, without waiting in prayer to make sure that that's the perfect will of God. If the man of God is proven, tested, and tried, it's okay to still test his words, to be on the safe side. Are you listening to me? But we live in a generation, the minute they hear a prophecy, they're ready to just run out and do what that prophecy says without testing it, without, without waiting, you know, because the Bible says in the mouth of two or three witnesses, let every word be established. Are you listening to me? Now I want to read something to you from Psalm chapter 25, verses 4, verses 12, and verses 13. Now I want you to comment under this video. Let us know if this stuff is helping you. Now watch this. Listen to what David said in Psalm chapter 25, verses 4, 12, and 13. Show me the right path, O Lord. Point out the road for me to follow. David said, look, I ain't taking no chances. I ain't rolling no dice here. I want God to point out out the right road for me to follow. I want him to show me the right path. That, that's a man that's willing to wait on God until the will of God become 100% clear. Some of you were warned not to marry that person, this person, the next, and some of you just went against the will of God. Not because it was God's will, it wasn't God's will, but because it was what you wanted and what you desired, and now you are catching hell. Are you listening to me? And you need to repent of that disobedience. Now watch this. Listen to what he said in Psalms 25 verse 12. Who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path they should choose. You see, God don't want you to play the guessing game. If you are not sure, wait on God until you are 100% convinced in your spirit that this is God. Because the Holy Spirit, listen, the Holy Ghost is a sign to you. The Holy Ghost is a sign to make the will of God crystal clear for you to be able to move forward with confidence. Now watch this. Listen to verse 13. Verse 12 says, Who are those who fear the Lord? He will show them the path they should choose. They will live in prosperity and their children will inherit the land. That's the result of obedience moving in God's perfect will. Listen to Proverbs chapter 3 verses 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding because your own understanding is limited. You can't even see what's around the corner, but God knows what's around the corner. He knows what's, what the future holds. God knows it all. And this is why you can put, this is why you can trust in the Lord with all of your heart because he knows everything. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. If you don't know which path to take, keep on praying and keep on waiting until you know like you know like you know this is a green light, 100% green light. Then you can forge ahead knowing I'm moving in the perfect timing and the perfect will of God. Everything is going to be okay. And if God's will is not clear, do not move. Do not forge ahead. Don't go forward with that marriage. Don't go forward with that business deal. Don't go forward with that opportunity. Just don't do nothing until you know, like you know, like you know, 
God is saying, this is my perfect will for your life. You are my strength. Father, I pray over my brothers and sisters this morning. I pray over every single one of them this morning who have been wrestling and struggling. They've been having turmoil in their soul. They don't know which way to turn. And now God, help them apply this word to their lives because when we don't know which way to turn, we just need to put on the brakes and wait on God until he makes his will 100% clear. You are my strength, sing to the Lord. You are my strength, strength like no other, strength like no other. Reaches to me. You are my strength. You are my strength, strength like no other. Strength like no other reaches to me. Listen, I've got some announcements to make here. I will be coming to Freeport, Bahamas. November the 18th, I will be visiting Invaders for Christ Family Center with Bishop Clifton and Apostle Carolyn Cooper. I will be there on Sunday morning, 10 a.m., and I will be there 7 p.m. that night. I will be preaching both services, the Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and the Sunday night at 7 p.m. I'm inviting all of our social media followers and viewing audience. I'm inviting you in Freeport, Bahamas, Nassau, you that's in the Caribbean. Listen, I'm inviting you to be a part of that meeting. The title of that meeting is, It's Time to Return Back to God. My God, that title is straight from the Holy Ghost. That's what God gave to Apostle Carolyn and Bishop Clifton. That's the Invaders for Christ Family Center. I will be there November the 18th. The service times is 10 a.m. in the morning and 7 p.m. that night. The address is 61C Frobisha Drive in Freeport, Bahamas. The address is 61C Frobisha Drive in Freeport, Bahamas. For more information, you can call 242-352-4787. For more information, please call 242-352-4787. If you need a healing in your body, if you need a touch from God, if you need a breakthrough, my God, if you need direction in your life, if you have been fighting a battle and it just seems like there's no change, if you are tired of circling the same mountain and being in bondage to that old devil, I'm inviting you to come and be a part of the service. There's going to be a great breakthrough. There is going to be an outpouring of the Holy Ghost. You don't want to miss those meetings. That's Sunday, November the 18th in Freeport, Bahamas at the Invaders for Christ Family Center with Bishop Clifton and Apostle Carolyn Cooper. I want to give you guys an opportunity to sow a seed into this ministry, to support the work of God in our lives, to be a part of what God is doing. Souls are being saved. Sick bodies are being healed. The discouraged are being encouraged. People are receiving direction for their lives through what God is doing in this ministry. And we say to God alone belongs all the glory, all the honor, and all the praise. And to sow a seed online, you can visit us right now to our secured ministry website, seanpinder.net forward slash give. seanpinder.net forward slash give. If you prefer to give through the ministry PayPal account, that address is paypal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. PayPal.me forward slash Sean Pinder Ministries. If you prefer to mail in your donations, make your checks and money orders out to Sean Pinder Ministries, P.O. Box 117442, Carrollton, Texas 75011 7442. If you're watching us through our YouTube channel, we're giving you the invitation right now to go ahead and subscribe to this channel. Click on the red and white subscribe button below this video. Just go ahead and do it right now. And every time we upload new videos or go live, which we do every Thursday night and Sunday night at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time, you will receive those notifications and the link to join us. Are you listening to me? If you're watching us through Facebook, 
we're giving you an open invitation to join our Facebook group. It's called I Believe in Miracles. Our Facebook group is called I Believe in Miracles. We are looking forward to accepting you into that Facebook group. And dear friends, continue to share these videos all over the internet. Help us spread this gospel all around the world. Jesus said this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached into all the world and then the end will come. My God, we are on the verge of fulfilling that scripture. All of the ministries that's on television, a part of the internet, that's just preaching Jesus Christ and him crucified, dear God. But we need your help. We need you to help us spread this word around to your friends, to your family members, to your church folks. Are you listening to me? And listen, on tomorrow morning, we will be going a little deeper into talking about knowing God's will. On tomorrow morning, we will talk about God's word is your compass to knowing God's will. You don't want to miss that broadcast on tomorrow. And remember, Pastor Sean and Pastor Amy, we love you guys daily. We appreciate everything you guys are doing, how you support and stand with this ministry. We love you. God bless you. See you on tomorrow. Bye-bye.